Welcome back, Griddle Cookie and More. It's a showdown. Today we're going to do a showdown of the indoor electric griddles. I bought a Blackstone a couple years ago, probably during the pandemic, uh, the Blackstone E Series 22 inch. Uh, so I wanted to get a griddle for inside. So when it's super cold out and rainy, and at the time I didn't have a covered covered porch or, or anything for my griddle. So, you know, if it was raining or whatever, you know, it sucked. So you didn't want to be outside. So I wanted an inside option and just for whatever, making breakfast, stuff like that, where I don't want to go outside and mess around with it. So I bought the Blackstone 22 inch. Well, you know, checking out YouTube videos, this and that, uh, came across Vivor. Um, so seeing these Vivor griddles on there and then decided to pull the trigger on a Vivor. So that's what we're going to check out today. So let's take a look at uh, what we got. So we got the trusty old Blackstone on the left and then I got my new Vivor on the right. So the Blackstone on the left is a 22 inch griddle and then uh, on the right is a 21 inch griddle. So let's kind of go over, uh, we'll go over each griddle real quick here. So let's check out the Blackstone. All right, so the Blackstone's 22 inch. It's a, got a ceramic top, so a non-stick surface. It's got two burners, or two electric burners per se. Uh, you can set it up to 500 degrees. Right now it's heating up. Uh, I do have a thermometer on there. I don't know if you can read that or not, but I do have it set at 350, it's right under, but it's still heating up a little bit. It does have a, a lid that comes with it that you can put down. The griddle top is, pops off for cleaning, so you can take it over to your sink and clean it off. I'm coming around the back here. Now I've had this thing for a while, so a little dirty. It's got the rear grease management, just like the gas ones do. This tray does pop off, so just like that. Um, and then real quick, just to let you know about, so when I first bought this, I'm not sure if it's the power cord inside this part that may be a loose connection. I did unscrew that from the back of the thing just to check the wiring on it, but uh, but sometimes you gotta jiggle it around to get it to work. So I'm not sure if this is a bad cord or, you know, a bad plug, one of the two. So, so that's pretty much the gist of that one. Uh, so next door to it. So this is the Vivor 21 inch. Now Vivor makes a 14 inch and a 29 inch. Now 29 inch is, uh, takes a, a 30 amp 110 outlet. Basically it's a lot of power. So you'd have to run a dedicated 110 line to it. Uh, to run it in your house. Both of these run off of 110. This one here, uh, it says it goes up to, you can see down there, so 572 Fahrenheit. Now I haven't cranked it up um, all the way to see where we go. This one's uh, more like a commercial uh, restaurant type, so it's called like an ironclad or I don't know, they got some, some uh, triple or, or quadruple layer plate on here and you kind of see the thickness there. It's right in here. Now I do this one. I don't season it. Some people do season it. I didn't season mine. Uh, I do clean it and then uh, I got a high temp griddle, commercial griddle cleaner I use. So I uh, just uh, blast that stuff off when it's hot. So uh, this one's got a front grease trap in there just like a commercial griddle and just like a commercial griddle it's got a trough there. So this one's just got the power cord there. That's all you got in the back there. So pretty much the gist of, uh, pretty much the gist of that one. All right, so I do have these heating up. So now, now the Blackstone says it's it's met its temp. So this is probably all goofy looking, but there's a bunch of lines, and then it's got three red lights when it's hot. I don't know if you can tell on that side. This side still well, just came up the temp. So let's see how close we are to temp. So we're sitting just below 350, so pretty close. We're gonna move this over uh, to the Vivor, see where we're at. So let's give the Vivor a second to, to register there and see what see what we're hitting at. So, all righty, let's uh, check out, see what the Vivor's hitting. All right, so the Vivor's right above 350. Now, I will tell you this, because I've used the Vivor about uh, several times. Uh, if you can see the dial there, 302, so it's probably not, it's probably a little bit under where 350 would be, you know, because this is 302, then 392. Um, so this thing probably runs 40 to 50 degrees hotter than what that thing says. So gauging off my uh, griddle thermometer there. So that's that. So now let's check out uh, the measurements of these two tops here. All right, let's start with the Blackstone. All right, so measuring across the Blackstone, it's hot. So 23 inches from edge to edge, you know, on the outside. And then we go this way, it's 15 inches, so exactly. Let's check out the Vivor. Now the Vivor is just uh, not quite about 21 and a quarter wide. 
And then the griddle, if you measure the whole thing with the grease trap, about 16 inches. But if you measure the cook surface, which is important, we're about 12 inches. So we're short about three inches deep. So you got about three inches more there and about three quarters of an inch wider. Uh, so you do lose some surface area with the Vivor. So let's uh, talk about performance. So I had the Blackstone. I bought it about in 2020, so I've used it a ton, uh, probably over like two, two winters. Now the, when I first got it, uh, probably for the first, I don't know, 10, maybe not even 10 cooks, that top, that ceramic coated top was like slick as glass, or I don't know, like an ice rink basically, man. It was super non-stick. That started fading away. Uh, you could clean it with baking soda to help get it to be good uh, or get somewhat good. But right now that thing's um, pretty horrible. I mean, you, even using oils and stuff, so like proteins definitely stick on there. But I mean, bacon's not too bad. So for what I use it for, French toast, bacon, eggs, mainly breakfast is the main thing I've done on it. Um, some sandwiches, stuff like that. Haven't really messed too much with burgers or anything like that on that one. Now the Vivor, I've used that a mm, good 10 times. Uh, the first time I did it, uh, in my first video where I kind of showed that, um, I did some smash burgers on there and in probably of all my gas griddles and everything, it definitely doesn't make the best smash burgers. But going with a non-season grill, uh, griddle, it does, uh, it is pretty cool, so compared to doing it on a season one. So what I want to do, uh, I got them both set around 350. I do want to cook a couple, uh, make a couple smash burgers on it. Now I've done uh, multiple smash burgers on the Vivor, but I have yet to do a smash burger on the Blackstone. But let's compare them to see how they compare. Both set at 350. Let's see how the burgers look. All right, give me a few seconds to get that ready. All righty, this is a smash burger test. Now we'll tell you this is round two of the smash burger test. Uh, when I went to the store, I grabbed some ground sirloin from the case, meat case, and I was worried it was going to be kind of lean, and it was, so I will include some footage of that, but uh, this is going to learning lesson to show you why if you're making smash burgers, 80, 20 or fatter, so this will show up. But anyway, so ran back to the store, grabbed some 80-20. Let's do the test. Got both griddles set at uh, about 400 degrees. So the Blackstone's at 400, it's hot, pretty much ready to go, kind of fluctuating. So let's start with the Blackstone first. All right, so we got these, uh, use a third cup, about two and a half, 2.75 ounce pucks. We're gonna do two of them on each one to test it. Uh, we're gonna smash it down, but not all the way full. Um, you know, I don't want to rock it to, taper edge because this is Teflon so you don't want to scratch it but uh, let's give it a smash. Get, get it pretty good here. This one's definitely going to hold it for that 10 second rule everybody talks about. All right, number two. Now what is cool here is uh, since that non-stick's not very good anymore, the patties stick fairly well to it, uh, enabling you not to really have to use parchment paper. Uh, when this thing was brand new, if you would have tried this, uh, uh, that burger would have stuck right to that and pulled right off the grill. But uh, since it's, uh, stuff sticks to it pretty crazy now is that uh, Teflon's worn off over the couple years, so uh, that's where we're at. So also cools this thing down real quick, uh, super thin, and we can so, so you can kind of see with GoPro how thin that is compared to how thick that plate is. A little shot here. Trying to lift up a little bit here, but uh, it's cooking through. So getting close here to, to the flip. We want to give it the maximum amount of time to get that uh, crust built up. So first time doing smash burgers on this, never have because I knew it really wouldn't perform well. So. Never mess with it. More of a breakfast thing than anything at home. So and some other stuff, but uh, 
All right, let's uh, give it a flip. Now, being uh, ceramic, or Teflon, yeah, ceramic, uh, can't use metal, so gotta use this old plastic uh, scraper I got off of uh, use this plastic scraper I got off of Amazon. Now, I will tell you this, because I just did that ground sirloin, which is way thicker. Um, this didn't stick near as bad, but you can see you did lose some crust there. I don't think we're saving any of it. Kind of lost it, so. There you go. Uh, you can see the smash burger. Not the crust we're looking for. Let's give it a close up. All right, so pretty much concludes that test. Uh, I'm gonna get set up on the Vivor and we're gonna uh, give it a go on the Vivor. All right, get that Vivor rocking up to 400 degrees. Let's give it a test. Same deal, couple uh, two and a half, two and three quarter balls. Smash it with the old Blackstone. Here we go. All right, I mean, just off the bat, you can tell this thing definitely got some better heat retention. Probably didn't chill down as fast. These bad boys will be ready to flip here in a second. All right, let's give them a flip. Now, you want something sharp here because you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose your crust. Smash burger. The chain they do a, they sharpen their spatula unbelievable right there up oh, lost up oh. Lost some of it there on that one. Put it back on top. All right, so there's the significance of having a sharp scraper for it. So, all right, that pretty much concludes that test. Let's get a little comparison of these. All right, so let's get a good look at these. So as you can tell, hopefully in the camera, uh, the Vivor is a whole lot darker than that one. So we've got that good Maillard Reaction there, you can just tell the caramelization of it and really can tell the difference, you know, those burgers look like that area that I didn't get scraped off, so. Uh, but, huge difference. All right, there you have it. So, kind of went over each, each griddle. Uh, Blackstone, I mean, it's decent for sure. You can cook a lot of stuff on it, but it, the downfall is it doesn't hold that heat. Uh, so when it comes to searing, stuff like that, uh, you can't make it happen. Vivor. It's got the thicker griddle plate, better heat to it. Uh, it definitely draws more power, you can tell, uh, off an outlet than in the, the Blackstone does. So, but I mean, with that thing, I mean, you could, I haven't done any steaks, but I mean, whatever. I mean, that sinks here is great, as you can see, just to the quality of the, of the smash burger it does. So, good test there to kind of show the difference uh, when you throw, when you load down the Blackstone, it cools down super quick. Uh, the Vivor does cool, but not near as much, recovers faster. So, uh, I'm going to give the win to Vivor on this one. So, so if you are in the market for an electric griddle, um, go with Vivor. And the last thing, I didn't really, I didn't look up the prices, but I spent 200 bucks on the Blackstone. It did give me a card to roll around on, um, and then I spent 115 bucks on the Vivor. So 75 bucks less, and then to me, it's uh, a way better griddle. So now you lose a little space, you don't have a lid, but I mean the quality on it and the capability of it's. Uh, is uh, much better than the Blackstone. So, so if I had my choice to do it all over again and knew about the Vivor, I would have bought that first, and then I wouldn't have bought the Blackstone. But being said, the Blackstone's not bad. I mean, I used it for a long time, so. Uh, but I do definitely like the Vivor better. So, but that is it for this video. Uh, until next time, we are out.